out of St. Prisca. It completes me. If any of you were to see me during the week, I sound like a fog part when I'm talking. I, I, I sound like I have a frog stuck in my throat. But I pray. And I told God how much I love singing to Him. I'm sorry. A little emotional here. Come Sunday morning. By the time I get to church, God allows me to sing praises to Him. I don't know if any period, rest of me enjoy it when I do. But it completes me. I love singing praises to God. It sounds 
to me like it pretty well covers everything that's in this world that God created is to praise God. He uses the elements for his glory. They fulfill his work. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I have to <clears throat> apologize to God. Last week, when I was at work, one of my fellow workers and one of my brothers in the Lord <clears throat> came to work with food poisoning. And he couldn't stay home because they wouldn't let him. So I went to him and I told him that I would be praying for him. God laid it on my heart to lay hands on him and pray for him right then. My only thought was, I don't want everybody around me to know. So I walked away in shame. And God beat me up with that for days. I finally went back to him and I told him, I said, I have to apologize for you. He said, for what? I said, because God told me to pray for you right then and there. He says, you know, don't beat yourself up. He says, it's hard to step out sometimes. I was so thankful that he was forgiving. Everybody in my work knows that I'm a child of God. But I was fearful for what they might think of me if I was to pray for somebody out of the open. I don't want that to be part of my life. I want to praise God Amen. everywhere. Amen. Now we'll get into the message. just come through the Red Sea. They still groaned and groaned. God led them through the wilderness for 40 years until that generation passed away. He raised up another generation who would do His will. Joshua found favor in his eyes. He was one of the spies who said that we're well able to possess the land. So God allowed him to live. And he put him in charge of Israel when Moses was put aside. They have just come across the Jordan River. God performed a miracle. He parted the waters again. He told the priests to go down into where the waters were and to stand with the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the power of God. They stood there. And the children of Israel were allowed to cross on dry land when they got to the other side. Moses turned around and the waters went back together again after the priests had come out. They were thanking and praising God. They held a Passover. They were glorifying God. You can find this account in Joshua, the fifth chapter, from the tenth on through the sixth chapter in the twenty-seventh verse. The children of Israel had just eaten the Passover. The following day, now I'm not going to read all of these scriptures because that's a lot of reading right there. I'm just going to paraphrase. But if you want, I'll give you the scriptures again later. They had just eaten of the corn of the land the following day. 
Bible called it parched corn. Or actually, it was cooked, you know, uh, probably stuck it over the fire in some tin foil or something. <laughs> but they partook of the land. And the manna that God had provided for them in the wilderness, it came along. And the Bible says they were allowed and able to eat of the land the rest of that year. While they were celebrating the Passover, Joshua looked over and he saw a man with a sword. And he went to that man and he said, are you for us? Or are you against us? He basically told Joshua, he says, look, he says, I am the captain of the Lord of hosts. Yes. Praise the Lord. The people who were in the land, they feared them. The Moabites, the Ammonites, they were coming against them. But the captain of hosts told Joshua, he said, fear not. He said, the battle is the Lord's. Amen. He's going to deliver them into your hand. He says, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to that city, Jericho. See, they were in the plain of Jericho. They were in Gilgal. He says, I want you to get everybody together. He says, I want you to appoint seven priests with chart trumpets. He says, and I want you to appoint priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant. He says, and I want everybody else to fall in behind them. He said, the ones who will go first are the priests with the trumpets. He says, I want you to march around that city. I want you to blow those trumpets while you're marching around that city. <coughs> the rest of you, I want to be quiet. Uh -huh. I don't want you talking among yourselves while you're walking there. I want you to be silent. They must have been a sight marching around this big walled city. I believe it was about 30 feet high and about 30 feet wide, if I remember right. I could be off on the, 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 the measurements. But anyway, it was one that uh, you weren't going to get through and over too quick. So here goes the children of Israel marching. Silently. While the priests are blowing the trumpets. It went around one day. They did it six more times. The children of Israel were quiet. God only knows what was running through their heads. Then Joshua is struck. He says, now, he says, today I want you to march around it seven times. And I want you to be quiet again. Let the priests blow their trumpets. I'm wondering what the people in this city are thinking. Mm. Who's these crazy people out here? Right. But he told him, he says, on the seventh day, or seventh time, he says, while they're blowing their trumpets, I want you all to shout! Yes. That's right. Yes. When they made it around the seventh time, and all of a sudden they began to shout, those walls keep tumbling down!
Second Chronicles, the twentieth chapter, or second chapter, the twentieth verse. Let me give you a little background here. I'm not going to read all of this either. I know you're saying, "How old?" Jehoshaphat. He was the king of Judah at that time. The nations were coming against them. God told Jehoshaphat, he says, look. He says, when he consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord forever. For his mercy endureth forever. When they began marching and singing and shouting praises unto God, all of a sudden, God confused the armies and they started to kill each other. The battle was the Lord. God uses his own devices to overcome man's power and strength. Yes. Who can stand against him? I said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. Do not be ashamed of him because he will be there with you. He will inhabit his praises. I hope this is coming across to you the same way that God gave it to me. Let's talk about our Lord and Savior. This can be found in Luke, the 19th chapter, 29 through 40. So, boy, you got a lot of scripture today. But I'm not going to read. I'll just give you a paraphrase. God took two of his, or Jesus took two of his disciples. And he told them, he says, I need you to go here. He says, and when you get there, you'll find a donkey's colt there. In Matthew, it talks about the colt and his mother. But in Luke, it just talks about the cult, so we'll just stick with that. He said, I want you to go, and if anybody stops you, and that's why you're taking that thing, he said, the Lord had need of him. And they'll let's bring it. And that's exactly what happened. They started on time, and they said, whoa, 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 where are you going with that thing? He said, the Lord has need of him. They didn't question further. They brought it. And when they brought it to Jesus, his disciples took skins and put them over him, and put their coats over him, let him sit on it, and led him, as it were, into Jerusalem. And his disciples began singing and shouting and praising God as he was making his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Now, Jesus knew what was going to happen to him when he got there. He knew that he had to suffer and die. But he made a triumphant entry into Jerusalem anyway. That's right. You know his prayer, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. They sang praises unto God while Jesus was going to his death. How ironic is that? I don't know if I could have done something like that. But then again, I'm not the son of God. Jesus transcended all of that and knew that even though he was leaving, 
his place in heaven. It was just for a short time. And God, who cannot look at sin, he forsook him when he became sin. That had to be an awful, lonely feeling. Yes. <laughs> but when he hung his head, and he took that last breath, you. But I think about David. You got another story coming here. The Philistines had come against the children of Israel. The children of Israel had displeased God. So they were allowed to defeat the children of Israel in this particular battle. And the Philistines grabbed hold of the Ark of the Covenant and took it to another place. And when they got it to this place, all kinds of bad things began to happen to them. So they finally carried it to a place called Kerjatharim, which means a place in the wood. And they finally fetched to David and said, hey, we need you to come down and get this thing away from us. Because it's causing us nothing but trouble. There's a scripture that says, Lo, we heard of in Ephrathah, which is fields of the wood. Kirch after him. Says that's where they found it. Right. Now, David appoints the priests to go out and bring the ark back. While they're bringing it back, one of the priests stumbles a little bit and the ark starts to fall off the, uh, the handles it was on. A man named Uzzah <coughs> reached out his hand to steady him. God <coughs> killed him just like that because he was not allowed to touch the ark. Right. That's right. Well, they finally got it all righted. And when he came down the street where David was at, David began inside as there's a spirit in him. The Bible talks about him being the apple of God's eye. I know that he felt something when the uh, dark of Cunna came. Yeah. All of a sudden, David started to leap, to sing, and to praise God. He got out in front of the ark, and he looked like a crazy man. His wife looked at him, and she despised him. Yeah. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When it wells up inside, please don't muzzle it. Just let it go. Yeah. You might look like a crazy man. That's all right. That crazy 
man one day is just going to be set aside. And we're going to take on the new man. Yes. We're going to be transformed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So all that crazy flesh that everything everyone laughed at is going to be gone. And we're going to be praising God in heaven. Amen. I was told the pastor, she'll have, can you come up to the piano? I was told the pastor before the service uh, got going. He asked me what I was preaching about. When I told him, he said, well, praise God. And I looked at him and I said, oh, something's occurred to me. You go into Revelations, you see the, the multitudes praising God. Right. You see the beasts and the elders, they're standing before God. They fall on their faces. They praise Him and say, holy to, holy to the Lord. Amen. We're going to be praising God forever. I believe when he pours out his spirit on us, it's going to get a hold of us to the point where we're not going to care what anybody thinks. That's right. If we're going to praise him forever, why not get a little practice while we're here in this world? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is power in praise. Amen. I don't know how that sounded to you, but it felt good. God gave me this subject. I said, Lord, I couldn't even praise you in front of some people. Why are you giving me this? Oh, man. He says, because the battle is the Lord's. That's right. My shortcomings. He still loves me. Amen. I'm sure glad I don't have to worry about getting to heaven on my own merit. I wouldn't get very far. I don't think they'd even let me on the bus. How is your walk today? Are you the reserve type? Lost in my praise. 
faith and strength. Not caring what time it was, where I had to be, or even who could hear me. I love getting lost in God. As I said in the beginning of the service, singing praises to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> How great. 